Double the pop protection. Pa pa pa! Wow. <laughs> Like oh. Tourette's. Bah, bah, bah. So my name is bah. Oh, Ben. 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 Oh, I cut off all of the pop. All right. Um. Hello, everyone. Thank you for clicking on us. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Accessory to Thought with myself. Ben. Where well, you started? Huh? Oh, you started? Yeah, yeah I have started, yeah. Okay, I can close the window there. Oh, wait, yeah, whoops. There we go. Right, yes, hello. <laughs> With myself, Ben, and uh, the Mr. Josh. So, um, yeah, just briefly kicking off things, I'm going to be starting a wee series of my own. Um, oh, yeah. I don't know whether to call it Heroes of Old or the Stories of Old, but uh, I'll probably go Heroes because that sounds cool. Um, I'm going to be looking at just characters in the Old Testament, um, going through their lives, talking about the lessons and the links back to the Messiah. I will then close the series with wrapping it all up with basically Jesus and then do a little epilogue on concerning Peter and Paul. Um, so that's the structure that I have. So today we're going to be looking at David. Yeah. Yeah. Brief introduction to what David is. David is described as somebody... He's described as a man after God's own heart. The psalmist. The, the psalmist, the man who can sing and also... Mr. Music Man. Conqueror, the ideal king, essentially. So, um, yeah, just a little brief intro about David. I haven't looked at I haven't looked at David, right? I haven't studied David in years. Like, last time I looked at it properly was, like, when I was, like, 13 or 14. Which isn't that far away, like, but, you know, still and um just reading david again is it's it's so gripping me it's like a yep. game of thrones episode or something or like lord of the rings or it's like this really gripping story about it, like battles and politics and emotion and relationships it's 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 just yeah it's pretty it's, pr it's pretty lit yep. so just a brief summary on who david is david was uh the youngest of jesse's sons his eight sons he was the guy who would look after his sheep. He would do all the wee chores while his sons all had their own families. And his three oldest sons would go where were soldiers in Saul's army. Uh, who's Saul? Saul was the king at the time, um, the king of Judah at the time. And uh, first king, isn't he? First king, yep. Yeah. He appointed by he was, he was appointed, well, appointed by, by God, but through the prophet through Samuel, Samuel, yeah. And uh, Saul did what was right. <laughs> basically how the bible says it is Saul did what was right in the sight of the lord until he didn't <laughs> so essentially um Saul got a bit got a bit hungry got a bit power hungry and god told him to eliminate an enemy city enemies of the lord and he was to no he was told not to touch anything he was told to eliminate it all wipe it essentially from the face of the earth but what Saul did was saw eliminated everyone yeah but he kept alive the king he kept and he spoiled he completely spoiled the city so he took all the spoils he took all the fat and sheep and cows and or ox at the time and just all those different kinds of things and then samuel basically came to saul and said yuppa you've you've done it you've done it wrong there mate and uh because literally um samuel walks into the tent and he's like so what's all that neighing and bleeding is that sheep where'd you get those from mate and then Saul was like, "Ah, oh, well, the people, he blames the people. It was like, the people wanted the better, the, the spoils and stuff. And then Samuel's like, right, well, that's the last straw, mate. Sorry. God's going to find a new king. And then Saul, from this point on, Saul then begins to have anger issues. He begins to have an angry spirit. And uh, very interesting. We'll touch on that later. But this is where David pops in, where David is the youngest, as I said, of Jesse's sons. Samuel goes to Jesse and asks to inspect, he basically asks his sons, and Jesse obviously starts with the oldest, with the inheritance, but then Samuel's like, or God's like, nah, that's not the one, so Samuel's like, yeah, sorry, pal, all the way down, and then Samuel's like, is, is this all your sons, Jesse, mate? And then Jesse's like, well, actually, I have I have my youngest son, uh, he's, he's out tending the sheep, and then Samuel's like, I bring him in, and then when he's bringing in, Samuel anoints him because this is God's chosen king. 
which is big stuff but he actually doesn't become king until a good few years later anyway uh there's a big war happening in um in uh, judah with the philistines and essentially we all know the story of david uh, david and goliath david basically goes to the war fr goes to the front to see his brothers fighting there gives them food and water asks about what the crack is his oldest brother's like you should go home you just came to watch the battle and then david's like nah mate i'm gonna kill that big giant over there yeah, so this is the david and goliath story yes. it's essentially the david and goliath story where um david kills goliath with obviously not just with stones but because he has god on his side now this is going to be the main theme of today's episode the relationships david has with this first this first episode by the way these uh, it's gonna be episode one and episode two most likely with this david thing but in no way do you probably need to watch the listen to the first one to understand the second one it's all fairly straightforward but uh, yeah david's relationships with the people around him and how they move his sort of story on always linking back to god always linking back to this 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 god and god is god is a really interesting character in this story because like no no literally like like we're always as a modern like modern christians these days we're always looking at the new testament we're always looking at paul and yeah. you know the the new testament jesus acts and stuff and it's always this gracious lovely god who spares but the god in uh the god in the old testament is like really really god-like if you know what i mean like you know praised and worshipped and determines the fate of entire kingdoms and can do great great miracles it's very it's almost fant fantasy-esque in fact yeah i would say when i was reading david or the story of david in um first first second time it's like it's really really gripping in that way so uh yeah so the lesson of david is he was always following god from his youth okay so what can we take from this if david, david, david every single thing david does he basically asks and prays to god all right it talks about david killing lions and bears and is and people testify to that he's like yeah if they took a sheep david would hunt the lion down to get the lamb back he would hunt the bear he would and he would strike down the bear and it, it, it's it, in 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 samuel it talks about how he would he would wrestle with the lion to get the lamb back and if the lion like he wouldn't kill the lion but if the lion raised its paw against him then he would kill, <laughs> kill the lion and it's like this man right he's doing he's not even a man he's a kid he's 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 he's, he's, he's a youth it describes him as and everything he does he does great things he does because he has a relationship with the one true god so then it comes to the ultimate sort of test this giant which is it's actually not the the it's the most popular thing we all know about david that and his big sins later on in his life but we're talking about david in his youth and goliath was just a means to get to where david was he became a military commander of a thousand men in saul's army but before that david was because i talked about how saul caught anger issues david then in some poetic loop one of saul's servants knew david and was like you can play the 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 the, the harp and the lyre really well mate so why don't you come in and calm saul down and um when saul was having a fit he would you know um yeah uh, david would play and it would calm it would soothe them and they sing we dolly boys they did yeah but yeah and saul became extremely fond of david from there on and he was like this is this man is the only thing that can calm me down his his music is he's got away with the music and you know that's, 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 that's it's fair it's relatable we've all had angry moments and music you know is a good wee thing to calm us down but that at first ad, admir, ad, ad, admiration Saul had for David becomes spite and becomes jealousy because David was the only one of a youth of the entire army of his, of his host the of the entire host it was this youth that killed a giant cut off his head with his own with the giant's own sword and then everyone started singing this one line and it's it's so prevalent it, and it haunts Saul it's Saul took down saw took down his thousands david his ten thousands yeah and this 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 is that this is the anthem of israel <laughs> this is the anthem of of judah at the minute this um this big 
that's the song that everyone sings every time they're marching down cities rejoicing with the victories praising god at all times at all times and um they're saying in this this line and it's just getting to saul like it's just getting to him and it talks about how the lord sent an a, a spirit of rage into saul and essentially saul then gets violent he throws a spear at david twice whilst david was trying to play the lute and stuff like that um and then basically it goes on and on and on and uh, it's this bi bipolar relationship saul has with david where david's is he becomes a military commander essentially and he's put in charge of a thousand men and in everything he does he is successful in everything his men are like top top tier men they're not they're not like going out with women that because and we know that because um later on in the story when david asked for food from in the land of nob where a lot of priests live the priests of god um the priests give david holy bread which is bread set aside for god and um they're only allowed to touch that if every single man was pure i hadn't been with women hadn't done it and they find every man to be pure except this one guy called doeg but i'm going to get to that because that's a really just juicy bit um <laughs> so essentially um we have this bipolar relationship that saul has with david now david saul has a son called jonathan jonathan loves his dad he loves his dad very much but with all of david's um victories and feats especially the goliath one jonathan became jonathan and david became this unit these these best friends who you know they, they just loved each other right they, they they spent so much time with each other and it gets to the point where they start conspiring or for their own safety they start a kind of mini rebellion to try and soothe saul's anger and it is so intelligent how they do that and but they only do that because of the love that they have for each other this friendship and um from that then is the reason why i'm talking about david this these relationships that he has and how it progresses his story and how we can relate to that so i'll get onto that now so that's why as far as i'm really going to go until uh, uh, later with david so these right, what are relationships josh <laughs> um a communion with people yeah as uh you know just uh you know friendship you've like uh, you say it's lewis remember the, my four loves it was yes. philia eros strong yeah, really really, really. philia, philia eros strong and agape all right what's right phil, what's philia josh do you remember no idea right, philia is i have right, barely so, got a grasp on english <laughs> it's greek well um the greek that's four kinds of love all right philia is the love between friends um strange no philly is either the love of friends or the love of family strange is a uh, love of family um eros is romantic love and um agape is the is is, is known as charity but ultimately is the love of, of a god they, they give love to a god to that kind of personal relationship throughout david's life these are the four most prevalent things his relationship his love for his friend jonathan and and saul because he was he was friends with saul he was very very admired saul um which is quite poetic i think because saul ultimately is the one who's trying to kill david you have then strong his love for his family it's his brothers and it's his father he respected his father deeply he did all the chores at home he would go he went to see his brothers at the front line to give them bread to give gifts of cheese to 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 saul so throughout and so with his brothers he had, he had that showed that relationship with his family and with his sons as well later on especially with solomon um, even though Solomon was, you know, the, the with Bathsheba and all that, but anyway, we'll get onto that later. Um, Solomon would be another one I was going to talk about, and then you have um, Eros, which is romantic love between um, Michal, which is a girl. <laughs> um, so that's that's um, that's David's first wife. That was Saul's daughter, because after David killed Goliath, Saul like allowed David to marry um um uh, michael michael michelle probably michelle but i, I can't read because i'm just like anyway so well so say michelle sir <laughs> um uh, allowed to marry michelle and so david then became saul's son-in-law 
which is a big big thing son of law to the king which is another reason why david got the fame that he did which is really poetic because saul was getting so jealous but it was a saul giving david all of these achievements you know saul made david the battle commander and he became super super successful saul gave david his armor and stuff to defeat goliath david refused it saul allowed him to become his son-in-law saul is the reason david got to be the david that we know uh, so those are the four and then agape is the love obviously that jesus that that david showed to god so throughout all of david's life all of it through his mock-ups and all these are the four loves that he's showing at all times all right and uh, I'm, I'm a sucker for, <laughs> for those um things now and those are the things that i think about often so what do i mean then when we're talking about um relationships then um so uh yeah so how relationships seem to determine the outcome of every situation david finds himself in it's the same with us like not me and you but humans <laughs> yes. um everything you do it's because of a direct cause of a relationship either yours or not all right let's take this podcast for example this is a result of the relationship me and you have a friendship obviously and um from that then obviously produce conversation um some hilarious conversations some very intense conversations if you remember our school days <laughs> and then from that then josh was like you want to do a podcast and there we go so there's 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 just a little mini arc a story arc of just how powerful a relationship can be yes so and then you can look at that in romantic relationships how i don't know two lovers obviously the lovers will change their entire lifestyle in order to make room for their lover to come in so uh, uh so love is sacrifice okay there's nowhere but the bible like, uh, if anything but the bible talks about how love is that kind of sacrifice you sacrifice your time your finances your resources your your very self at times in order to lift up another person and that was what jonathan did with david and um, so saul had hurled spears at david had tossed abuse at david but also at the same time loved david he but he was just extremely extremely jealous and it was I, it's a mental health problem that he has all right it's this it's because it, it doesn't it doesn't talk about how saul is always angry it talks about how once again saul had a fit of burst of rage his anger his anger management issues and then it gets so bad that david has to run away essentially and he does it a few times but then jonathan and david meet up and they have a talk about what to do because saul disclosed to jonathan that he's gonna kill david so jonathan obviously loving david where he came to him in a field and he said look hide over there because we're gonna have lunch here pretty much in this field so hide behind those rocks all right and then you'll hear everything and um and then i will i will shoot arrows I will, I will shoot some arrows uh from a distance to let you know whether if they were and then collect the boy and then get a boy to collect the arrows and if the arrows are before the boy then david's in danger and he has to leave and if the arrows were um after where the boy was um and the boy didn't know anything about it then david was safe and the, jonathan successfully pers persuaded um saw to, to see reason but he doesn't do that because they have launched in this field twice first time saul is like oh where's david and then they actually speaking merry things about david and he's like and then jonathan basically says ah yeah no he had to go home to to attend a feast in bethlehem because david was originally from bethlehem um so then saul was like oh miss him and then the second day he realized uh, david didn't show up and then saul got just mad and this is where he threw the spirit of his own son and then jonathan was raging and he was like dad what the flip <laughs> And then he did the bow and arrow thing where he got the boys to collect the three arrows. And then he met up and David and Jonathan are like weeping together because this means David needs to leave. And this is where the, the really juicy... Like honestly, if there was a film series that I could create about David, I would. Because it's, that, it's just that gripping. And so I, I'm, I'm digressing a bit into why I'm telling you the story about these. Because sometimes it takes your relationships 
sometimes people ignore just how important the relationships you have with your father, your mother, your sister, your brother, your friend. People these days, I find, like I find relationships these days to be probably. Uh, I mean, in my in my in my experience, my group, <coughs> my group of friends, relationships seem to be the only really thing of value to anyone these days. Um, you know, people don't care about pretty much what job they're getting as long as they're getting paid. People are living for the weekend. The are only, they just people you know, or yeah, what? yeah, yeah, yeah. People are just the only thing that that they're really proud of would be maybe their relationships with one another. And obviously, I'm here to say, oh, that's actually fantastic, and that's okay. Because if you if you build on a relationship like Jonathan and David did if you build on a relationship that consists of those four loves applied correctly then your life you could become a king and obviously not a real king but metaphorically you could become a king because it's it, it all wraps up it all ties up together you know as, as i said let's use this podcast for an example all right it was me and you we were friends at school then we basically got together, put our heads together, went for a few walks and we were like, alright, let's do this thing. Got the kit, got everything sorted and, well, you did, I should say. <laughs> and then pretty much wrapped it all up when we got going and uh, yeah, a few, maybe a few episodes are a bit rough here and there, but like that's the point of growth, you know? And that wouldn't have happened without, obviously, at first, the relationship happening. Now, what's the biggest thing about David, Josh? his relationship with god exactly in fact that's exactly what, that's goodness for that exactly <laughs> it's exactly what i wanted you to say i mean so you get it you get it his relationship with god it was always anything he did he praised god anything anything at all god he always put god before him and said is this lord is this what you want me to do bless this with what i'm about to do it, it, from from battle strategy to just being at home with his mate it's like the thing about today is we apply our relationships to different things you know sometimes you have a couple that look they, they live far excuse me they are quite distant all right and then you know, they're like just don't talk to each other about work we're only here to love each other okay or you've got excuse me a father and a son who you know they're like all right yeah they ex they've accepted that you know the son's grown up and the father is getting older they're no longer sort of father and son they're just a man talking to another to an older man and you know so we just we sort of segregate our relationships but god is the one the god of the bible is the one thing you cannot separate you cannot sort of put god in a glass bottle and put it on your shelf like you know you can't you can't keep god as like a pint glass if you know what i mean where you only use for beer you only use for like god things like um uh like you know like uh evangelism talking in this podcast you in um anywhere right god is not something you can section off um what's the thing we did at work compartmentalizing <laughs> you know uh for you that don't know what that means it's essentially dividing your effort into lots of things so if you had five things to do it would be you know you've got and you've got 100 percent of your effort it'll be dividing 20 percent of your effort into those five things and if something's done with only 20 percent effort it's, it's not done well at all so instead put 100 percent of your effort into one thing and then the next four will follow so that's compartmentalize you can't compartmentalize god because he doesn't compartmentalize us that's the thing i'm trying I have to get no at. idea where you're going with this. <laughs> <laughs> i'm saying God is the one thing, right, in which if we have a relationship with him, right, then, as I said earlier, we can become kings, queens, whatever. Yes. Right? That's pretty obvious you know, if you're a Christian, right? But people who aren't Christians, like, they're not going to get that because at the end of the day, they just see a bunch of people following a big sky daddy because <laughs> that's, 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 what, that's what, I think that's what we're allowing them to see. Instead, we have a guy called David who from a very early age trusted in God from the very beginning and before he was even 30 he became a battle commander for even 20 25 or something he was, he was, a, he was a leader of a thousand men and even then he kept God at the center of his life 
and God kept him at the center of David's life, if you know what I mean. He didn't teeter to one side or anything. He kept firm to the plan that God had. And it's not actually David that I'm trying to focus on here. It's it's Saul. Because through all of Saul's rage, he started a relationship with David. Through all of Saul's rage, he started a relationship with his son, Jonathan, and Samuel, the prophet, and God. Saul was a big believer in God. Um, and but, but but Saul decided to not put God at the center of his life. He didn't compartmentalize. <laughs> he kept God to where God he wanted God to be, and he kept being a king to where he wanted king to be, and he kept being a father to where he wanted to be a father to be. And if you do that, then his effort then sort of merges over all of these things, and they begin to mix up. So he was only twenty percent, as I said, being a father to Jonathan. He was only twenty percent being a father-in-law to David. He was only twenty. He was only given twenty percent to his God, and only be given twenty percent being a king. And it was because of his mental deterioration, Saul's kingdom started to reject Saul and go to David, and that was making him lose his mind. And I think we can relate a lot to Saul about that. When things start to lose. When things in your path, when you you know, when you because I've been struggling with this myself actually this week, with just jobs and stuff like that. And you, you know, what do I what do I want to do? Do you want to go to uni? Do I not want to go to uni? What what, what am I going to do in the future? What Saul is doing was instead of having this clear path in which he thought he did, he made a mistake, and it was very easy to go back onto it. It was very easy to go back onto the right path. It's to acknowledge that mistake instead of blaming other people. What he did with Samuel he hung on to the fact that god's plan wasn't didn't involve him and he hated that because he was the most powerful man pretty much in this time at the minute because he had god on his side all at all at all, at all times and suddenly saul felt he wasn't and so he just deteriorates himself and he, he breaks things off and his relationships as i said with david jonathan um samuel and all and even the it, it pushes him over the edge until he does this terrible terrible thing where he's hunting down david he then, I was talking about Doeg earlier, there's a guy, there's one man in all of David's host called Doeg, who is a bit of a psychopath, and um, Doeg stays behind in a city in which um, David and his host is fleeing from Saul, because Saul is hunting him down, and then, uh, so this is a land, it's a, it's a city called Nob, and in Nob are all the, fire, all the um, are all like the chief priests of God. And this is the thing that pushed Saul into, made him a complete madman, was so, was that the priest uh, didn't want to tell Saul where David went because David was a holy man. So and Saul ordered his guards to kill all the priests, and there's 85 priests, and none of the guards did. But then he turned to Doeg, who was a bit like Judas, I think, who was just standing there. He was with David, but he stayed behind because he knew Saul was coming because he didn't, obviously, he was a bad guy. It was like a twist in the story. And he turned to Doeg and went, you're loyal to me. Kill these men. And Doeg immediately kills 85 priests. And because of the carnage then, the entire city is then plundered and pillaged and every single man, woman and child is slaughtered because of the frenzy. And that is the perfect example of how Saul became a king and he spiraled down in his own jealousy and his own rage to being an enemy of God. And like he literally says, kill the chief priests of the Lord our God. <laughs> it's so contradictory, you know. And we can, we're not obviously going to come and plunder and kill people. Like that's not, that's not obviously us. But our, our imaginations can make it seem like we are spiraling down into a hole of just darkness without any light to see. And I'm telling you, it's relationships that carry you through that. Because the thing in the Bible is, the, thing, the most prevalent genre in the Bible is family. Because God is a God of family. He's our father. He then provides families for us to be a part of, to then show um, sanctification, to show... Um, you know, being like Jesus and being a, a a Christian, I guess. Saul didn't have that, and we can relate to that kind of spiraling down because he couldn't hack the idea that somebody had derailed his path when actually it was him. Because if Saul realized his mistake at the very beginning with Samuel, he would have he wouldn't have done the things that he did there's there's a there, before even Saul got to that city he tried to hunt David down um before that 
but on the way he had a revelation and he started prophesizing and the, at the very end of that chapter it says it's like it leaves you with a cliffhanger it's like does this mean saul is one of the prophets <laughs> that's just one of the passages that i just i'm very curious about and i don't yeah. really understand it's like uh, is saul one of the prophets that was a saying yeah in that time yeah because he was hunting down david you know so what happened was he sent an army he sent an army to find david and then they all got to this place of holiness and then they all started like it was like a big christian festival <laughs> or not christian at the time obviously but it was a big festival and everyone was just enjoying god and stuff he sent another army and they all began enjoying god and then saul went himself and he was like right i'm gonna get this david guy and then he began enjoying himself and he he it did so much he's tore his robes and he gave them up and he lay naked day and night in in respect and in 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 his own sort of self-sacrifice to god and that pleased god greatly and he was happy god he saw was happy in that moment and i think it, it's it's so poetic that we have this tragedy of a king to raise up this perfect king and that was necessary in order obviously for jesus to come in because didn't that, that would have happened because david is obviously jesus's dad joseph uh, adopted dad <laughs> um, was the direct descendant to like everyone says oh joseph is kind of irrelevant it's actually through joseph's line that he's related to david not mary which is interesting um is it not is it not both huh is it not well they both come from the same tribe um but at the start of matthew i'm pretty sure it, it doesn't mention mary it mentions it goes down to joseph's name um both gene i think both genealogies have been are both mentioned yeah, yeah, yeah maybe sure. maybe but i'm, I'm not really yet. i'll get that for you next uh, next um, episode but do you see what i'm saying do you see what i'm saying so yes a, a relationship if you just work at it and you put in that kind of sacrifice and that kind of faith in god that david did then you will become a king but if you work at a relationship so much so hard that saul did but then you mess up it all it takes is just to for you to humble yourself and fix that relationship and help the person your successor so you know saul knew that david would is going to be his successor and he hated that he hated that but if he put aside his pride if he put aside that and if he understood the mistake that he made in the presence of samuel then it would have been the greatest dynasty ever it would have been saul this king mentoring this david and and he did mentor him for a bit because it was it was like when he was happy when he was sad and he was so bipolar at that time but if you if you allow yourself to blame if you if you allow yourself to spiral in this i didn't make a mistake i didn't make a mistake i didn't make a mistake you will end up being so angry and lots of people are going to get harmed by that he killed his own subjects because of the hatred he had towards David. And I think that's something I relate with because I suffered with a lot of hate towards my old church. And that's something I have realized and I've had to obviously come to terms with. But I could see that spiral, especially when I was doing my, especially I was reading here, you could see that kind of spiral. But essentially, I'm just going to wrap this up now with just the final thing about relationships and stuff, right? And actually and i talk about how god was sort of like a big main character so we talk about right this obviously links to jesus every but every story links to jesus right we often um the cross right he david jesus died on the cross right and he saved the world i feel like especially in western civilization we just say oh yeah i'm saved but we don't focus on what we're saved from we don't focus on the horror of what we're saved from the god of the old testament was a battle commander he commanded armies of, and kings to wipe out entire kingdoms because they were not part of the plan they were not part of and it's hard for people who aren't christians to hear that but it's because there's no place for evil in god's world there's no place for that and it's like oh they killed it killed everyone because obviously god had that plan he has that plan for us. Jesus himself, what does Jesus say? He says he doesn't come bringing peace, but bringing a sword. He says he's going to divide brother against brother and mother against daughter or something like that. He says he comes with you with a sword, not to bring peace. And I feel like we, we, we picture Jesus as this all bringing peace, this person who's going to save the world. He did save the world, 
he saved the world from itself because um it's not it's not him coming to the world to save everyone there it's him coming to the world to take his people away so that the world can essentially explode in a fiery ball of genocide and horror now that's really really graphic and really really interesting um sort of language that i'm using there and it's it's horrible and it's terrifying but that's that's what happened with saul that's what happened with him he basically went down and down and down until he committed mass murder of an entire city all because of his jealousy of one thing that's the length that's how hate works that's how it goes so people who hate god people who hate christians or any kind of person it doesn't matter what faith they follow or who they are I mean, there's a lot of hate in society today with you know like you know like with all the white supremacy and all the people who don't believe in these kinds of things you know hate is seems to be a running theme in society today hate leads to destruction on both parties it destroyed saul mentally it destroyed everything that saul is his own subjects and that's because the relationship with god fell away now if you have god at that center this battle commander but also this savior then you will be spared from that the, the cross is a sword josh <laughs> the cross is a sword in which we go and hide behind to be not hide behind but to bring our burdens at the foot of the cross and to be set free but those who don't are going to suffer the, the wrath of god and that is what a relationship does it builds you up to lead you to a good place and basically saves you from yourself but also from the damage that you can do if you let those relationships fall apart and that's kind of that for part one of david the relationships that you have if you allow them to 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 be the reason for you breaking apart then you will be like saw and can ultimately turn you away from god but if you be like David and rely on the relationships and the four loves and ultimately look at Jesus as the savior of the world and recognize what he's saving us from, then you will be free and you will, and you will have dark days, but you will always overcome them. But yeah. Very good. Yeah. Thank you so much for listening. Um, stay, stay tuned. No, not stay tuned. Stay. Look out for part two where... I will be talking about the other half of um, David, where we do come across those dark days. Yeah, and you should you should read it for yourself as well. Oh yeah, hundred so, percent. Um, read First Samuel. Um, it's so gripping the story of David. Honestly, it's like a big fantasy novel. But um, yeah, definitely, definitely read it for yourself. And do do give me a DM as well about what what things that you thought you find from it but what yeah. did you find interesting on this <laughs> episode of i accessory two thoughts yeah but uh yeah thank you very much for listening with ben thompson oh yes and josh you were young goodbye goodbye <laughs>